So um, the Egyptian, um, some of the earliest specimens of furniture that we have are from the Egyptians. And um, the reason we have them is because they were preserved in the tombs of the pharaohs and other dignitaries of, um, of Egypt. And because of their burial customs where they would bury, uh, they would bury these guys, these people with their most precious belongings so they would have them in the afterlife. Um, the Egypt is a dry climate and the entombment was inside one of these pyramids. Um, so it's covered, it's like surrounded by a ma massive amount of stone. It's in a dry climate. Some of it is gold plated. And then the whole thing is sealed up. So with other cultures, like with uh, the ancient Greeks or the ancient Romans, we don't have any wooden furniture left. It all was destroyed, dissolved, decayed. Um, but the you know, Egyptian stuff sat in these tombs in some cases for thousands of years. And so when um, people started going into them, especially when the um, Europeans went over and you know, were goofing around in Egypt, um, colonizing it, looking for resources, they came across some of these, um, you know, some of this, um, this, came across these tombs and they got into them and they discovered all of this ancient furniture. Um, so it's clear that the upper class of uh, enjoyed luxury because of the precious uh, materials that these are made from. So the um, Sphinx is a symbol, is a, you know, and it's a, it's a it's symbolic creature strongly associated with the Egyptians. Um, and you'll, you know, the Sphinx is, some, is a, a character that is, um, you'll see appear, appearing. If you see a Sphinx, you know it is Egyptian. It's, it's meant uh, to refer to the ancient Egyptians. All right, so um, hieroglyphics. Uh, style is a method of writing utilizing pictures to represent sounds or syllables. Stylization is to treat in a manner or not a realistic way. So the stylization, you see like the the profile representation of figures um, and this low relief. Um, this is like, this imagery is very typically Egyptian. And that's ancient Egyptian, not present day Egyptian. All right, so here's a photo of a uh, tomb. Uh, this is tomb of uh, Nefertari. And so you can see the kinds of ornament that is common to Egyptians uh, from the representation of different gods and cobras and even down to this fine fine like the really like tiny repetitive ornament uh in the border and on the ceiling um this is pretty spectacular stuff honestly um so the main thing that i want you to get from seeing egyptian stuff the egyptian ornaments and uh furniture especially the ornament is that you can recognize it as egyptian as opposed to greek or roman Column. So here's some, uh, there's going to be some, there will be some vocabulary terms in here. A column is a vertical structural member, um, the post in post and lintel construction. Um, post and lintel. Post is a vertical element and lintel is on top. So you have like two posts and a lintel and then you have a doorway. Oops. A capital, uh, uh, Egyptian columns, you have capitals. It's this broader section at the top. And um, 
These are usually stylized with lotus, palm, or papyrus motifs. Uh, some of them can be a little hard to distinguish between like um, papyrus and um, palm. And some of the lotus mo some of the lotus capitals are either closed, they look kind of like that, or they're open like this in this picture, kind of fanned open. So the, these um, pyramids are where a lot where the um, these tombs are found. Um, they also. <coughs> Um, featured other, like, um, there are temples and, like, pretty vast, uh, some very vast uh, grounds to some of these temples. But I mentioned this with the um, post and lintel. Uh, that type of construction is called traviated. And it's... Uh, Type of construction that was utilized uh, by the Greeks and the Romans. I'm sorry, the um, the Egyptians and the Greeks. When we get to the Romans, the Romans introduced the arch, and the arch made a huge difference in what they could build. All right, um, this is a pylon of Ramses II. So the pylon is a monumental gateway. You often see these an obelisk, which is the big, tall, tapering tower or stone uh, stone pillar. Uh, it has a pyramid on the top, usually covered with um, hieroglyphics. Um, you can see this. Uh, this slide is from Virginia Commonwealth University in Virginia, designed in 1845. This is a building that is Egyptian Revival. Uh, Egyptian Revival is, um, you know, these these ancient styles. One of the reasons you study that you will study these ancient styles, and these ancient civilizations, is that this these styles keep coming back because these styles are kind of like a mark of quality. That if you put a like a Greek a Greek capital on something. Then it looks legitimate. At least, you know, people, you know, they may not know much else about you, but you've got this, like, you know, you have this something, you have something in it that is symbolically legitimate. All right, here, um, this vast temple um, with this um, causeway and Pylons leading up to the to the um, temple sanctuary. Um, the term axial refers to this arrangement where you have a ninety degree angle as a part of the whole um, uh, temple layout. So the whole you know, this whole thing is this vast temple um, complex. And considering the limited engineering that they had to do, to you to work with, um, the Egyptians managed to accomplish a lot. Uh, you can see the scale of this, um, like this hall, which is like with these halls that they built as part of the temple complexes with lots. This really this forest of columns. This is called a hypostyle hall, and. Um, one of your terms uh, refers to this section up here. Um, in modern ter modern um, terminology, people often refer to this as clear story. Um, I learned it as clerestory, um, especially where it is um, applied to churches, or Christian churches. I will pronounce it clerestory. Um, so this. And it's this section of the windows in that raised section. To get light into the center, they make this raised section, they put windows there so light can come in. Otherwise, it would just get darker and darker to the middle. A little bit of environmental design. 
Uh, and of course, column vertical structural mel uh, member in the construction. Uh, here's a photo of one of these places, uh, which gives you some uh, appreciation for the scale of these structures. They weren't messing around. Now here, this is some Egyptian revival um, Scotland uh, built in the 1830s. And you can see these little squat kind of Egyptian looking columns. This also has got some Greek and Roman. Oops, no, 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 go back. Um, this has got some Egyptian, also some Greek and Roman. You can see these, uh, the capitals up on this upper story have got the um, Egyptian palm leaf capitals. But the later revival styles just kind of throw everything into it. This has elements of both, of all, like of Greek and Roman, of the, sorry, Greek and Egyptian architecture. Here is a photo of the tomb of Tutankhamun when it was found. So uh, it had probably already been raided for the most precious materials. Um, and all this furniture was left behind. So um, it is a you know unique as I said earlier, it's a unique aspect of Egyptian furniture that we have all this Egyptian furniture and sculpture that uh, in other cultures it would have it would have just um, fallen apart, decomposed. This, you know, wooden furniture just doesn't last thousands of years under normal circumstances. So here, uh, a folding stool, wood inlaid with ivory. So this, um, you know, ivory is um, when a material or substance is laid into a, into a cavity in another material. So like, to make an inlay with the ivory, this wood would have been carved out in this kind of, in this shape, and a recessed area would have been made and it's, and it's pushed into it. Um, so it's just a way, it's really a way of creating, it's a, it's a decorative technique for often, mostly for wood. You can do it with other materials, but you need to be able to, you know, you need to be able to like a wood soft enough that you can carve it out. Um, and you know, with some of the, um, um, places where, let me go to another slide here. Oh, yeah, this is a, let me go back to this. Um, the Egyptians also were uh, the first, uh, the, the Egyptians also had like uh, techniques for creating joints for wood, like uh, the dovetail joint was, was uh, first used by the Egyptians. Um, you know, like it's when, you know, you, um, well, I'm create a. Um, I'll, I'll I'll share with you a um, diagram of what these of what these things look like. But uh, they created they use sophisticated joinery, which um, you know when the Europeans came across this stuff, some of it surprised them. They had no idea that civilizations that early knew about um, you know how to build furniture and to build it well. Um, all right, so this is a, um, a, it's a low stool called a ployon that is, um, from Versailles from, this is like French Baroque era. And really the crossed legs here, um, this is kind of like a, you know, like this, I, like the Egyptians started this thing where they have this crossed legs, uh, which makes sense. This kind of like scissor fold with the stool. Um, it kind of makes sense here, but it kind of became a stylistic thing, a stylistic choice. I mean, this is also a folding stool, but um, these kind of like, you know, this sort of like X frame became sort of, this has become a pretty common design. 
and sometimes it's used symbolically to refer to ancient Egyptian or, you know, a seat that uh, is for an important person. This stool would have been used at the court of Versailles, and um, I'll talk more about uh, Louis the Four Louis the Fourteenth um, later. But at Versailles, you didn't usually have permission to sit down when you were at the court with the French monarch, and so if you did get permission to sit, like come and sit by me and talk to me. This little tiny, like, child-sized stool, your, your attendant would bring it out and put it down, and you would sit down in it. Uh, and, of course, you would be set lower than the monarch. Um, it's like this stool that was made to reinforce the social order. All right, and so here we're... Um, the... Um, this... Barcelona Chair and Stool by Mies van der Rohe from 1929. Um, the, stools, the Stool is a, a, is a more modern, um, when uh, Knoll International started to manufacture it in the late 1940s, they created some more modern versions and that stool appeared. But it's kind of the same idea. All right. Uh, this is a headrest uh, ornament is uh, with uh, heads of the god Bess. This is 18. So don't worry about the dynasties and all this. This is like ancient Egyptian. As long as you know that it came before the Greeks, you're good. On the headrests, these um, the pharaohs, um, pharaoh's wives, or if the pharaoh is a woman, pharaoh's husband, um, other nobility. They had, they had um, just like wigs or like hair, just like really rigid. It was almost like a big costume helmet. And they would sleep in it. And they had to have these headrests that would hold their heads up so that it, they, uh, they didn't screw it up by sleeping. It. So it's kind of a strange thing, but they, there are plenty of these headrests um, that are, you know, that have been found in Egyptian tombs. Okay, so here is a religious throne of Tutankhamun. Um, very elaborate, lots of gold. Another of his, as you saw this previously, um, another of his thrones. So the throne um, is, you know, this idea of like having an important chair for an important person. That's what a throne is. And um, they're often raised, either like they're made taller, like this one sits on these little drums with the end, like the lion head and the lion leg with the lion paw, strong animal, pharaoh, you know, there's an association with them. Um, the, um, yeah, so the thrones are, you know, we have these, you know, these are some of the first chairs that we have and they're, they're preserved because you wouldn't preserve the furniture of someone who's not a god or not important. So, um, you know, this is, um. You know, this just like this chair is like it's it's more than a chair. I mean, it really is. It's a throne, and it's a it's a very um, you know this chair made for one person. Um, technically, there's a stretcher. The stretcher is this horizontal element that runs between the legs to um, stabilize it. And um, In later centuries, this is uh, 1802, the English designer Thomas Hope. Um, this is like an Egyptian revival. It's got Egyptian elements. It's got Greek and Roman elements in it. Um, you'll 
see this, and here is the um, vault, the Greek, the Egyptian vulture. Um, we'll see this later, where these like revi these revival styles to sort of make this collage of ancient um, motifs, or just like you know, sort of like ancient designs, but then it's it's made into something modern and not always that good looking. Here's a painted alabaster casket with hieroglyphics. Um, alabaster is a stone. Alabaster lamp, so like an oil lamp um, in the form of a lotus. The lotus is a large water lily considered sacred by the Egyptians, used as decorative motif in architecture and decorative arts. This is a table by Eileen Gray from the early 20th century. She was a good furniture designer and interior designer um, way back a hundred years ago. Um, I like this like kind of like ridiculous lotus leg. Uh, the, actually, the tassels are even more ridiculous. Um, kind of fun. It's um, lacquered. She was a, it was kind of one of her specialties was lacquer. Um, but so the lotus, this lotus design, you can't do lotus without making somebody think about the ancient Egyptians. So, it's, you know, once it's in our culture, you know, um, you know, the, um, it's sort of like, it's hard, it, it's hard to avoid these associations. Um, the Egyptian really became, um, you know, became well known really only like in the last two, three hundred years when, you know, the English and the French were going fighting over who would have control over that region, and um, they have they just made sure to uh, raid some of the temples along the way. Um, they found the um, Rosetta Stone, which was a stone that allowed them to um, uh, translate hieroglyphics. So um, I don't really know much about exactly how it works, but basically they found some, found this tablet that was uh, allowed them to know what all those hieroglyphics actually mean. Okay. Um, so that um, Egyptian, the... Um, The furniture is important um, because it sort of it sets a precedent. And so, and um, you know, a lot of what the Egyptians designed and developed and built, um, we're still using it. We're still using. They they have their you know, chairs, beds, cabinets, um, stools. Or, you know, and you know, a lot of them have not changed significantly. So I mean, there's not not much you can do with a table or a chair that's different. You got to have it. It serves a function, and that function is very important. Um, you can do some interesting, you know, try to do some interesting things in terms of what it looks like. But a chair is made for a purpose, and that is to sit in it. And if you can't sit in it, it's not a very good chair. Okay. Um, any questions about uh, about this? What I have shown you tonight.
thing. Well, I will encourage you. I'm going to uh, stop that. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, that's a summary of the Egyptian. Um, look over the um, vocabulary, look over the, the discussion board assignments, um, and I will summarize notes for you and post those in Blackboard. Um, and I will. Um, uh, I just had one question. Yeah. Um, about the Egyptian furniture, um, do we have any insight into like how long it took to create those pieces and how many people like built them or, or created them and how much like time and work went into those? Good question. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Um, it is, um, it's well made, so there's a lot of skill that went into it. Um, I don't know um, how long it would take to make some of that stuff, but I know that it, um, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that is, um, would probably would would take someone who's very good at it, a you know, like master carpenter or something, you know, someone of that sort. Um, and um, so they they were you know they were skilled, and so they had skilled people working on that stuff. Um, they did know complex joinery for for furniture, and um, when you know. Pretty much any of that stuff that's, you know, oh, this stuff is being made for the, the pharaoh. The pharaoh was understood in that time to be a god. And so if you didn't make mistakes, you didn't, you know, you also like you didn't cut corners when you're building furniture for the god. Um, so I imagine they would, um, you know, probably worked under some pretty strict demands. Uh, and I'm sure that you didn't want to disappoint the client in this case. So um, I can see if I can find some information about what we know about who made this. Uh, there are some, um, there is evidence of the like kind of like the you know, domestic architecture of everybody else, just like people who were everyday Egyptians, which meant pretty much everybody who worked, you know, keeping the civil keeping the the civilization going. Um, so, um, but you know, because their homes were not considered to be all particularly important, particularly important. Uh, they have not been preserved. Thank you. Yeah. I was just curious. Everything's so beautifully detailed. So it's, um, I was just curious about it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, um, I guess it's, it's interesting. Like if you look at this, um, Go back to that. Like the this folding stool. Uh, it's a really beautiful wood. I mean, the design um, with the uh, um, the bird head holding the base. Uh, and this is pretty sophisticated. Um, you know, bend, you know, in some cases, you know, bending wood is possible if you get it wet. If you steam it, uh, you can bend it. So there's a lot of work that went into making these things. Um, so it's, uh, 
you know, the Egyptians were an early civilization, but they were not a primitive one. And I had a question about, um, I didn't quite understand um, the, the, the purpose of the headrest. Mm. Uh, is that, is that the, they just had like intricate hairstyles or, or was it um, some sort of, um, you know, like a, a headpiece that they, you know, the, um, like a pharaoh or somebody mm. who, who's tired, um, you know, in the position, is, is that what they used to wear or, and how do we know exactly that that's what they use it for? And it was not say, you know, a chair for like a small child or whatever. And it, by the way, it, the, the, the birds, um, had, um, is, is really everywhere on their furniture. Um, yes, yes. Um, you know, the use of a symbolic animals is pretty common in decorative arts. So, um, I, you know, I, what I have learned about it, about like these, like the, um, these are headrests and that the reason for the headrest is that they had their like hair done in such a specific way that they couldn't screw it up. And so they had to just like, when they slept, they could not sleep. It seems weird. And also you think like, I don't know, how could they even sleep? Like, like with your head or your neck resting on that thing. Um, I, more information to look up. Yeah, maybe I, we, I just can't quite compare it to anything. How, how tall is this thing? Or maybe it's quite small. So in that case, it yeah. would have been fine. Right. Um, um, I would imagine that it's, um, you know, it could be off the, like, maybe, I don't know, like either, like if it, maybe it's not on the bed, maybe it's like off the bed so that that. Just, okay. Well that, that would make sense. Yeah. It doesn't like, yeah. Cause it looks like I couldn't sleep with, the, with my head resting in that thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think um, that is enough for tonight.